Hi, everyone. We have a number of speakers that were lined up uh, to be here from the Pride Center, but they do not appear to be here at the moment. Um, not sure what's going on, but I want to appreciate and thank my friend and colleague, uh, Michael Schiffelbein, who's going to jump in and share a few uh, thoughts. And then this will also be our topic for the larger discussion in a few minutes. Some things I can say are that I think that the Pride Center is aware that the, of the organization of a straight Pride Day, and that is kind of a big thing. It's viewed as really a hate group. Uh, organizing this. And so uh, I know that there, there may be some organization uh, in response to that, that event. I know that's one of the things that, that probably the Pride Center is talking about. Another thing within the uh, LGBTQ community is, has to do with religion, I think. I, I think that there's a, there's a, uh, uh, there's a lot of reasons to feel not supported by religious communities or faith communities. And so I think that, uh, that's, that, that sometimes a struggle within the, the LGBT community in Modesto. Um, uh, people who really uh, don't feel that they're welcomed at church or feel that religion is really kind of opposed to them, uh, to us. And so that, that sometimes is an issue when it comes to, um, uh, feeling welcome or, you know, I, it must be intimidating to come to a group of people who are coming from faith traditions to, and feeling that you're, you're not going to be accepted or that there are reasons, you know, that you won't. <coughs> um, and then, um, you know, from a, I know from a, a Christian perspective in terms of, of faith communities, uh, there are churches that are, uh, welcoming or open and affirming and our our church is called open and affirming that's a designation of the united church of christ uh meaning that people who are lgbtq are welcome as members are welcome as church leaders would go through any of the process anyone would go through to be a church leader um, are welcomed into ordained ministry if that is their calling and and if that's affirmed um, and are also uh, affirmed in marriage and in marriage equality. For us, that's what it means, uh, open and affirming means. It's a, it's a designation that the UCC created back in the 70s. And um, any congregation that wants to be open and affirming within the United Church of Christ goes through a process, a discernment to, uh, to decide to be that. And our church went through that process in 1987, our congregation. And other other faith groups, other Christian groups, I know, um, have similar uh, designations, welcoming or in different places when it comes to uh, the welcome that they are extending to LGBTQ people within their within their church. Um, and the Episcopal Church went through quite a process of that, and and now is is pretty much at a place of of complete welcome, I think, in ordination. Uh, the Methodist Church is divided and is um is you know is really maybe looking at becoming two separate denominations over the issue um then you have a, a group like uh, church of the brethren here in modesto which is part of a pretty conservative denomination but there are particular congregations within the, the brethren uh who are welcoming and committed to being that um and so the Church of the Brethren here in Modesto is very welcoming and affirming. And I guess that would be another kind of distinction. Um, some churches, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about this from a Christian perspective, but there's also the other faith traditions, particularly Jewish uh, tradition and, 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 and levels of welcome or not welcome, depending, et cetera. Um, but um, there is within the Christian tradition also certain congregations who would say that we are welcoming but not affirming that we would welcome you to to be here uh, uh as children of god but we will not affirm your the, this uh orientation that you have as um as healthy and good and and that you were created like this by god and and not affirming of families or or marriages or commitments so um that's uh, 
that's where some some denominations are too. So anyway, so locally, I I think I, I think that at the Pride Center particularly, there's an awareness of um, of the straight pride event that's coming up and the way to address that. The Pride Center is always concerned with with really um, asserting the dignity of of people who are LGBTQ, and um, it reminds me a little bit of uh, in, of a uh, Howard Thurman's book uh, Jesus and the Disinherited, and he and he talks about what what does it mean for the disinherited to uh, is there something about Christianity that can appeal to the disinherited, not just to people who want to help the disinherited, but to people who feel that they are disinherited. And one of the things that he says in his book is that uh, dignity is the, the most important thing, that the disinherited need pride. Uh, they, they, they have to know that of their value and inherent worth. And so part of the journey for the disinherited is to claim that. And for those who are Christians, and and Howard Thurman is saying, actually, the way of Jesus has a way to do that because uh, Jesus was affirming of those who were uh, disreputable, disinherited, those who were uh, prone to be dismissed and and appealed to uh, their sense of of worth, being created in the image of God, et cetera. And so um, anyway, those are some things that I could throw out there about uh, what is going on maybe in the, in the community, some concerns, and from a religious concern, but particularly Christian, that's my, you know, that's where I know, or I have information. Uh, do you want to add a, a thought or two about any um, issues you're aware of nationally? Does the LGBT community feel a level of increasing acceptance, decreasing acceptance. I, I'm not asking you to speak for, right. you know, hundreds of thousands of people, but you, do you have a, a sense of kind of the where, where I, people are at? I think that you know there have been a lot of strides for people who are gay or lesbian when it comes to um, human rights, civil rights, that kind of thing, uh, greater recognition, marriage, marriage, etc. Um, I think that. Probably right now, transgender people are feeling particularly vulnerable uh, because there are all kinds of, at, at state levels, laws and policies that are really designed, uh, I would say they're, they're dehumanizing to transgender people. And so there's a, there's a strong sense of vulnerability of that. Um, I also know, I notice that when it comes to certain when it comes to Black Lives Matter, that there's actually a connection to uh, LGBT people in this movement. And we have had people uh, posting notices on our church door uh, or calling us to telling us that we can't be Christian and support Black Lives Matter. And when I, when I have spoken, to, I spoke to one person at length on Easter about that and to ask her why that's true, and she, she was black, she identified as black. And she said, she told me it's because Black Lives Matter uh, supports non-traditional families, uh, LGBT people, and, and Black Lives Matter wants to destroy the traditional family. Uh, that was her reason. And we, did, we, we didn't talk about that for, uh, for a long time. I mostly wanted to talk about racism and her experience of it, um, but that is, that's been a reason given. And so um, there's a kind of link then between that, this particular movement, Black Lives Matter, and the LGBT community and uh, a feeling of um, that, sub, that uh, at least from Christians uh, that reject Black Lives Matter, it's, it's um, at least in part because it's perceived to welcome people who are not uh, traditional families or traditional uh, roles according to uh, their understanding. Michael, thank you for uh, a very uh, thoughtful presentation. I realize it was not per se planned. I hope we'll have our, our designed speakers back at some point, but I think you did a great job of at least uh, putting <laughs> some of the issues on the table. 
we're going to go and stop the recording so we can have the rest of, a, of our meeting.